Hello, this is your host, Christina from Savvy Radio. Thank you for joining us for our Heartbeat of the World video series, where we're bringing you some of the top experts around the globe to talk about some of the greatest challenges facing our country and the world. We're joined by Joel Daniels and Oliver T. the Owl from HootQuarters.com. HootQuarters is a wonderful video series for children teaching them simple lessons about music, education, the environment, and healthy living, while demonstrating the powerful influence of friendship. Find out more and watch Who Quartered with your family today at whoquarters.com. Hi, Joel. Hi, Oliver T. the Owl. Welcome to Savvy Business Radio and our heartbeat of the world. I'm so grateful you could join us. This series that talks about some of the greatest issues affecting mankind and the United States. And one of the things that got called in the most to Savvy Radio was really the concern about the environment. And you guys are going out there and really helping kids get a handle on what's going on, what they can do to make life better for all of us. And before we go to all of that and the wonderful work you're doing, share with our audience a little bit about what brought you to creating your program and Oliver T. The Owl. I started, I guess this started as a kid's band called The Hoots that I play in. Neat. Great music. Yeah, thanks, Oliver. <laughs> and that, uh, that started really accidentally when the first of my friends, uh, about a decade ago, had uh, children, uh, twin girls. And I really didn't want to play music for kids uh, mm. because I associated that with like Barney, uh, which nothing wrong against Barney. It just wasn't something that appealed to me as a then uh, 20 something. Yeah. And a friend of mine said, well, why don't you just write some songs for them as a gift? And I, I really didn't want to do it. And she kept pushing and eventually I relented and uh, people, people really, I recorded the songs, people liked the songs. And I realized after I finished writing the songs for the girls, I just kept thinking about kids songs. Mm hmm. And, but I didn't want to do kids songs that really spoke down to kids. I wanted to do kids songs that adults could uh, listen to and appreciate that I could listen to appreciate uh, that music snobs like Oliver could listen to and appreciate. Even I appreciate his music. Um, yeah. And, and so uh, that it kind of started that way. And once I had 10 songs, uh, we recorded an album and it's uh, sold a lot of copies now all pretty much via word of mouth. That's great. And Somewhere along the way, I thought it would be fun to do uh, videos, mm -hmm. uh, you know, related to the band and to uh, four, four uh, kids and their parents. And so we built a set and we started uh, shooting, shooting videos at a treehouse that Oliver uh, lives in. I'm very partial to owls, as, as I've told you beforehand. Our logo is an owl. Um, I think they're beautiful birds of prey. And, and, you know, people have often said they're kind of not that wise, but actually they're amazing birds. And uh, it's interesting. You said. Yeah, they are. They're very amazing birds, Oliver. But you know what I find really interesting and what I like about your program is the fact that you say you don't talk down to children. That is fabulous because a lot of the kids show that what bother me about them is they kind of talk to kids like they're, they're dumbbells and they're not. They're, kids are very smart. Oh, they are, uh, they're amazingly smart. Every time we play a show, I'm amazed at the questions we get asked uh, by the kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't shock me anymore. I just, what is shocking is what you said, mm -hmm. uh, which is that I think it's become increasingly easy to make, you know, content, uh, video content, music content, but that with that comes a, a, an abundance of bad content. Yeah. And so uh, for us, I've always wanted to achieve a certain level, um, which is just that, you know, somebody that is really into videos or really into music, they could appreciate it too and have it be something that would start conversations. Mm. And Oliver, what, what for you has mm -hmm. been standing out about you? What drew you to talking about environmental issues or helping kids understand that better? What kind of drew you to all of that? Well, the environment is extremely important. Mm -hmm. And every day when I flap my wings and I fly outside of my tree house, I like to have clean air. I like to have clean air to breathe. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I like to eat clean worms. Yeah. And I know they're all dirty, but I want to make sure that dirt doesn't hurt me. That's right. That's, and that's right. important to everybody, that's whether right. they eat worms or not. <laughs> yep. Clean worms are very, very important. I've and never been able to get him to try worms. Ah, uh, they're very good. A lot of protein, I hear, actually. I agree. That's yeah. probably very true. It's probably very true. Actually, yeah. actually, guys, what recalls for me is I grew up in the country in Virginia, and 
I lived with woods all around me, a lot of animals. I used to go out there and, and just hang out in the woods and feel in commune, communion with nature and the animals and the trees. And I think just before I left Virginia to move to New York, they had eliminated or um, ripped out all the trees and all the wooded areas around my house. And it was sad because all these animals had nowhere to go. And that's one thing I think people don't take into effect is that, yeah, there are people moving to the suburbs and such, and they need houses. But often I don't think we think about the repercussions of what we do as mankind, how it affects other living things like owls sure. or other animals. Yeah. I mean, there, there really are, a, you know, when you think about it and just, just as you said, there's, there's really a finite amount of resources on the planet. Mm -hmm. And I don't think uh, we're always conscious of mm -hmm. how those resources are, are being used. And I think there's, there's probably always, there's always ways to optimize uh, how, how we use things and yeah. uh, how, how we think about the things we consume. Yeah, absolutely. Because I, I think, honestly, not every person wants to live super large in a mansion. Me, personally, I love the water. So if I had a little hut or um, cottage, you know, one or two bedroom apartment on the water, that would be like my ideal dream yeah. uh, house. Some people want to be in a big apartment building. So it really depends on the person. Not everyone wants like a big mansion. You hear people say, if I w got the lotto, I'd have this huge house and, and all this stuff. And I've heard actors who've gotten to the point where they made millions. And they said, you know, I felt empty after I got all this stuff. I thought I would feel fulfilled. But you begin to realize that all this stuff that we've been told that we must consume doesn't make us happier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all, Oliver seems very happy on his perch. And I'm very happy. And you know what I think? What? More people need tree houses. That's Instead right. of cutting down the trees, just build your house in the tree. Oh my gosh. Have you seen, there's this guy who's an architect and I think, I don't know where he does it, but he actually builds this super amazing tree houses that are high up in, in like the um, jungles and they're amazing. I did read an article about that and okay. I would love to, I've always thought it'd be fun to have him out uh, at our tree house because okay. I think I'd like to, to get his opinion, right Alex? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I'm sure and, there's, yeah. Yeah. And I think you also might have heard the teeny um, house movement where they're trying to get people to understand sure. that you can live with less and even a smaller house. Well, I've been living in a studio apartment. This is a studio apartment, guys. And I've been living in a studio since I moved out of my own 25, 26 years ago. And I mean, I, you know how to make it work. I mean, things have dual purposes and stuff, but you don't really need a lot to be happy because happiness doesn't come from the stuff you have. It comes from your attitude. Sure. Sure. Very true. Yeah. yeah. And so beautiful feathers. Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love your color. It matches my hair. That is true. Yeah. I love your hair. <laughs> uh, what is the biggest lesson you've learned from doing the show and, and helping kids and, and learning about the environment yourself? Uh, well, I think, well, one, in terms of like a lesson, just that I never would have thought, uh, didn't never really have thought all the way through. We did a, uh, we did an episode actually on um, Oliver's favorite subject, which is worms and, <laughs> uh, and their ability to do uh, uh, use their uh, how they can be used in uh, composting because they you know you can you can uh, and you could do this even in your studio apartment if you wanted you could take your food scraps and your waste mm -hmm. uh, not no meats dairy products or oils and you can uh, actually feed them to worms mm -hmm. and the uh, worms will eat them and their waste you could use to uh, fertilize your plants or more uh, fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. and I really didn't understand that uh, process at all. Uh, when we when we started that particular uh, lesson and episode, neither did I. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Oliver was on the wrong path mm. uh, with his worms, but now, I just wanted to eat the worms. I didn't realize they're useful for other things too. That's right. Mm. But now we know you could use them uh, for or composting. Mm -hmm. So that was probably like a, a, just something I hadn't really fully, you know, connected all the dots on. Yeah, uh, it just just that came from uh, writing the show. But I mean, I've certainly learned myself a lot about the process of making mm -hmm. uh, videos and, mm -hmm. um, you know, just how to how to tell a story that would connect with um, with folks. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not saying that we've, you know, um, mm -hmm. reached reached the pinnacle of that ability yet, uh, but we're learning all the time, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah, same with us. I mean, we yeah. just started the video process about two years ago. We started doing the live shoot, as you can see behind us in yeah. the stage here. We decided, hey, we could do the videos online. And it's yeah. a new learning process doing it that way. Um, but, you know, back to what you're talking about, about not realizing there's certain things in your life that can add to the circle of life. 
And, and more to that, I remember reading an article, I think it was somewhere in Asia, where there was a, a dictator not too long ago who had decided that hummingbirds were annoying. And so he had told his military to go out there and kill them. Yeah, because they, they make so much noise, and they're all over the place, there's just too many of them. Yeah. But they went out there and started murdering them, and then they had a huge famine. Why? Because the hummingbirds were, you know, moving the plant uh, seeds from one place to another and helping stuff to grow and helping things sure. continue. And and we don't realize that there was um, also uh, coqui, which is a frog in, in Puerto Rico, which makes this kind of like this little whistle. And it can be annoying if you're not used to it. But you know, what people don't realize is that everything in nature, whether you have it part of your life or not, plays a great integral part of the circle of life. And you eliminate it, 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 it affects everything else. So these frogs, very true. Yeah, absolutely. So they, these frogs, because of, you know, people traveling all over the world, somehow made it to uh, Hawaii, which is another island. And the people of Hawaii are, what are up with these frogs whistling all night long? Yeah. And they wanted to get rid of them, but it caused other effects and other problems. Uh, what, have, what have you discovered through your research on how when, when wildlife moves from one, you know, one place to another, how it affects the living things there? Because everything has an integral kind of balance in nature. And when you add or take away things, it really affects the whole, the entire whole, people and animals and everything. Sure. Well, I mean, I think you were, you were sort of getting at this uh, earlier when you were talking about, you know, the effects of people moving from one place to another and, you know, it displaces the, displaces the animals. Uh, certainly we were lucky. We uh, didn't cut down our particular tree, but uh, we built a house in a tree and we were lucky to meet Oliver. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was lucky to meet them. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, I just think being conscious of, um, of the, the actual, even physical space you sort of take up and what you're displacing, I think, yeah. Uh, has been something we've been very conscious of. Mm-hmm. Um, an example along the lines of what you were talking about, and I'd love to do some kind of an episode about this. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't talked haven't talked to Oliver about it. Yeah, I d- don't know how he feels about bats. Mm-hmm. Bats, but <laughs> but Ow. I've spent some time in Austin recently, where they have, I believe, the biggest uh, colony of bats in the United States, living under the uh, Congress Bridge there over over uh, the lake that separates North Austin and South Austin. Uh-huh. And uh, when the bats first arrived and they, they spend uh, several months there migrating between uh, North America and somewhere in Mexico, I believe. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, the people in Austin did not want the bats there. But then all the scientists said, hey, wait, they, they came here for a reason and they will do a, a great job of uh, uh, dealing with the insects because they eat, I don't know what it is. I, I'm, not, I, I'm gonna give you a number because it's high and it's. I, when I heard it, I was blown away. But like millions of pounds of insects every night. Mm. And it's a lot of worms. Yeah, yeah. That might not be true, that number, but it's really high. Uh-huh. And, and then the people were like, oh, well, we don't really necessarily love having insects around. And it's good for the bats. We're going to like it. And so there's also these benefits that you get when you, the environment and nature be. If you're not well educated and you don't ask questions, you'd never know. Yeah. Yeah, like the, with the hummingbird thing, you think, oh, they make noise or so many of them, but they, they serve a purpose. They're here for a reason. And as far as the, the bat eating bugs, I mean, here, wonderful part of living in New York, boys and girls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the part of having the bats, I mean, we, we spray our food with a whole bunch of pesticides. Now we have the bats eating the, the bugs. They will be right. on, less on the food. Right. And, and of course, less Very true. Yeah, less poison on our food. Uh, so, I mean, there's many different ways to go about looking at the situation and problems differently so that we can all add to finding solutions that are less harmful for our body and less harmful to the environment and the animals around us because we're all living on the same globe. What mm-hmm. we do here affects uh, anywhere else in the world. We'll be right back after these messages. Think back to when you started your business. You had a dream. You had boundless passion. You wanted to create something different. There was a problem and you were going to solve it. Being an independent retailer is rewarding, but challenging, and there's a lot more to it than you ever imagined. Well, Lightspeed is here to help. With 45,000 customers around the world, we've helped countless entrepreneurs nail the business side of retail so they can spend time doing what they're passionate about. Join us for a six-week speaker series featuring a curated panel of experts that will answer some of retail's toughest questions and give you the edge you need to stay competitive. You have a passion, and we have a passion for technology, inspired by you. Visit lightspeedhq.com slash speaker dash series to learn more. And that, I think 
the most interesting thing about how with the internet and everything with TV that we begin to see how interconnected we are, not just with our the environment, but just like when you say or do something here, it does affect the rest of the world. It's like we are a very integral part of a, a family. Sure. Sure. Yeah. That, that uh, butterfly effect. Yeah. Yeah. What is the goal of your show going forward for Oliver T and you? What do you see happening in the next couple of years? Uh, well, I'm, I'm hopeful that we can, we can keep it going and just kind of try to find uh, different ways to uh, really connect with, um, you know, with, with the audience and find, uh, find lessons that are sort of worth, worth talking about. Uh, and I think, so I think that's the, that's the main goal. I mean, there's, there's so much, um, you know, people, people contact us all the time and my friends will say, well, what about doing a show about this? And I think, ah, oh, that's just, a, that's just a great idea. Uh, and I, and I hope we can, we can really keep doing that. Uh, cause I, I really think, uh, I've looked around and I don't, I'm, I'm sure there is, because there is so much content, you can't find it all. But I think what we're doing is just a little bit different than um, a lot of the stuff that I see out there. And I would love to have more folks come in and talk about what, uh, their, what their expertise is and have more musicians on the show, because uh, we really did start out as a band. And I love the idea of um, you know, still connecting with an audience through music, because I think there's... Um, you know, we, we always get melodies stuck in our minds, or most of us do. Uh, and I think there's there's a, a nice way to, you know, to teach things through through songs, too. Yeah, I, I think it's a, a supreme way, because it really hits at your emotion, your heart. And there's something yeah. that you get intellectually from a book, but it doesn't really stick into the core of your soul until you hear the music. So, right. yeah, actually, yeah, I think it's a fabulous way, especially to reach children who are so open to wanting to learn anyway. Cause I mean, kids just come up to you and that, why is the sky blue? And then you're like, I don't think about that actually. I just go outside. Right. Why is the sky blue, Joel? You know, it's funny <laughs> that, it's funny that this should, <laughs> this should come up. Cause we're also working on a new record. Hmm. And uh, there is a song that starts out why is the sky uh, with, blue? with the chorus that says, uh, I gotta know uh, what, what makes the sky blue. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't have an answer to that. Uh, but I think it is, it might have something to do with the reflection of the sun off the ocean uh, mm -hmm. into the atmosphere, something, something along those lines. That's a lot of science. Yeah. Wow. Joel and Oliver, this is so interesting because I was in Greece many years ago and I remember the water was like this deep blue, like a sapphire. And I thought, wow, it's so pretty. But the interesting thing was, because the water was also very shallow and we were on this island, I forget which one. And I looked down as I got to the edge of the water and it was clear, like I could see to the bottom and see the rocks in the water. And I thought, well, that's weird. When I step back, it looks like a deep blue, like a sapphire. Right. But when I look close, it's actually clear. And then it hit me, it must be the, the sky, because the sky was so super blue. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not really sure about that. I feel like I did a little bit of research when I was working on this song. Mm -hmm. So kids at home, don't quote me on that. <laughs> go, go Google it yourself and try to figure it out. And then, then send us the answer. That's right. Please let me know, because I'm actually curious. <laughs> yeah, me too, absolutely. What is the coolest question you've gotten so far from a, from a kid that's written in? Um, well, we often get, I mean, we, we always get asked if, if Oliver is real. Uh -huh. uh, and of course, he, of course he is. Of course I'm real. Um, Don't you see me on Skype chat? Yeah. So, he, yeah, this is, this is living proof, everyone. Here he is. Hi, everybody. But we, we did when we, uh, now we haven't, we have a lot of scenes that we haven't really put out yet, but we've sort of been showing them around uh, to different kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we've certainly got the same question, which is that Oliver's a big fan of worms, uh, which are, in fact, uh, gummy worms. And, uh, you know, we've had, the, we've had the question of, well, you know, they can't really compost, can they? <laughs> uh, so we, we've had, you know, when we've done sort of some tests, some test showings, we get, we get funny questions along, along those lines a lot. Yeah. Well, actually, I found out something interesting about birds. I had always wanted to go to the water and feed the ducks like bread. And I, I had actually heard that bread is quite harmful to birds and also rice pellets. Yeah. That the best thing to give them yes. is seeds and stuff, which I didn't know. So Yeah. You, you yeah, the, the rice will expand in their stomachs, I think, uh, just like it will when we put water in it or we add it to water. So I think that can get really dangerous. Yeah, and the same thing they said about bread, that bread is just really bad in their stomach and it, it, it's not good. So. Live and learn. Go and feed the duckies. Don't feed them no bread, people. Feed them some seeds or... Um, seeds, yeah. yeah. Birds yeah. are naturally gluten-free. That's right. <laughs> 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 They're very healthy. <laughs> yeah, very, very healthy creatures. That's right. 
Well, this has been fabulous. And I loved you coming out to share this very important information. There's so many people out there who really want to know more about this. And, and how, before we go, I want you to share with parents watching and listening in, how can they open up the subject environmentalism to their children? Uh, you know, one, tune into your show, which would be great. But another way, maybe just to bring up the topic to their children, what would you suggest? Probably framing it as being that, that we're all, you know, while we're all really important, mm -hmm. we also, our connection to the environment and to the world is also really important too. And so you have to always sort of be conscious about where you fit within, within the world. Mm -hmm. And every one of your choices does have uh, an impact. And so just kind of, uh, I think, you know, just a simple, as simple as uh, just whatever you're consuming, you know, whatever you have for dinner or for lunch or, or whatever, just think about, could I, you know, is this, this piece of that's left over, uh, perhaps it's a plastic bag or a paper bag. Could I recycle it? Mm -hmm. uh, or should I throw it away? Uh, because when you throw it away, it's going to either way, it's going to wind up somewhere. Mm -hmm. And maybe then you can say, well, uh, would there be a way to, if, if you're going to throw it away, maybe there'd be a way to change that mm -hmm. and have it be something that you wouldn't have to throw away. Uh, because yeah. if there is a finite amount of resources on the planet, we got to just sort of think about how each little decision we make will uh, have an impact down the line. Absolutely. What's well, been helpful for me and my partner growing um, in learning more about this subject is really I, I'm a documentary queen. I love documentaries and it's a way to look at the world and see how different things, issues, environmentalism, how different elements affect the whole. And um, so I, I've watched documentaries on like you buy an item and it's like $5 shirt. Well, in that awesome price, well, what did it take to get the shirt from on on the rack to you, sure. what, what were the elements? So it was an Indian sweatshop somewhere and someone got paid a penny a day and you got yeah. this beautiful shirt for $5, but the place still made a profit. So often thinking about, okay, what did it take for you to get that super big deal for a $2 shirt, $5 right. shirt? Um, did someone have to work for almost nothing and not be able to feed themselves for you to get that awesome deal? Right, right. Yeah. And I think, Very good point. Yeah, yeah. And I think, think bringing up the subjects are sort of the documentaries. I mean, we... Uh, our show is format where it's video, and while I think what we've made is mm -hmm. is of a quality where parents could easily trust that it's going to be safe yeah. screen time, they could put it in, they could show their kids and walk away and it'd be fine. Yeah. I think it's also nice, you know, in watching what we do or, or watching a documentary like you're talking about, to do that with your kids mm -hmm. because, you know, that's going to have not only will there potentially be an opportunity for a conversation about what they just watched afterwards? It's going to force you as a parent uh, to, to really think about how you're going to respond uh, because there's an infinite number of responses that you could give. And, you know, you gotta, uh, you know, I think we should always be questioning these things. It's not just something that uh, kids should think about, but you know, as, as they grow up, they should, you know, when they're 20 and 30 and 50 and 70, they should always be thinking about these things because yeah. they're still going to make an impact in the world in some way. Back to your, your, your response about environmental sustainability, I think it's really important in our show mm -hmm. that we show that animals are friends too. And birds and owls can be great friends. And it's important that kids know that. Yeah. That we're all beings. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. my, my best friend here, Henry, uh, and then all the friends I used to meet when I would go into the woods and see the birds and the squirrels. I mean, they're all, they're all magnificent in their own way and, and serve a great purpose on this beautiful planet. More to that, when, when you're talking about really watching documentaries with your kids, it's a great way for you both to expand your, your knowledge and your growth and learn together as a family. And, and like one family did, the, the mother was France from France and the dad was American and they decided they were just throwing out way too much stuff, way too many recyclables. So they decided to use everything where it was reusable. So they would take like glass containers to this meat market and get it filled up with meat instead of having mm -hmm. them use the packaged material. And they got to a point where they could have what we throw out probably most American families in a day, they were throwing out in a month. Yeah. Now, they took a great amount of effort, and I always tell people when they come on the show, and they, if we have someone talk about weight loss or we have someone talk about XYZ and improving your life, going from where they are to where you are, as they said, they didn't start overnight like this. It was something that right. was a constant evolution process. Yeah. So that's where they are now. Um, and they even share one glass at the table at night. They, they, they fill up with water and they pass it around the table. Now, that might be a bit extreme for some people, but it's about taking elements of that and adding what 
part works for your family and doing it in pieces that that's doable. Sure. Yeah. One, one little step at a time, right, Oliver? One step at a time. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I don't want people to go away without finding out how they can watch your awesome show and find out more about you. Share that with them. Uh, the, probably the easiest way to be to go to hootquarters.com, uh, which is H-O-O-T-Q-U-A-R-T-E-R-S.com. Uh, and we'll, while we're working on uh, updating the a website, there's, there's some information there. And we have uh, some videos up right now on YouTube. And of course, the band where it all started was uh, the Hoots. And yes. if you Google if you Google the Hoots, uh, you should find some information about the band as well. Fabulous. So, yeah. How often do you do your show? Is it like once a week, once a month? Is it like? Is well, it- we've <laughs> we've been filming we've been filming now for a few years, and we've just started to release videos. Maybe in the last month and a half, two months. Mm-hmm. And so we're putting out new videos uh, about every Tuesday. Okay. Um, and the the issue with filming for us is we live in Sacramento, mm-hmm. and it gets very, very, very hot in the summer, and uh, especially in the treehouse. Especially in a treehouse up yeah. above. <laughs> yeah, high up in the trees in the hundred degree heat. So we don't we don't film as much in the summer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, having said that, if there's a you know an interesting musician or guest that's passing through. Uh, we'll, we'll do what we can to, to get, get something filmed. Wow. Well, we yeah. got to come visit you, Henry and I here. We yeah, I, I, we, oh, please we would do. love to have you. Yeah. yeah. Anytime. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, yeah, Sacramento is a rad, rad city. And, um, you know, we, we, we love having guests. Yay. Well, I want to thank you both for coming to share your valuable wisdom today on Savvy Business Radio and our Heartbeat of the World uh, video series. Thank you so much, Joel. And thank you so much, Oliver T. The Owl. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank you for having us. Thank you so much for having us. Yay. (laughs) See ya. Welcome to the Racing to Success Minute with Nadine Lajoie. Are you nervous? when you are doing a presentation in front of a group or even when you are doing one-on-one or when you have a new date the best way is to prepare yourself with a template you just put different bullet points and you need to structure especially in a presentation into the template and you practice practice and practice over again Like motorcycle racing, you cannot go in the race without practicing again and again. So be sure you apply that principle into your life and your business. You will be less nervous more and more you are practicing. So this is Nadine at NadineRacing.com.